Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, in this one we're going to be creating a pickup system um, that we can use to modify something on the character. And um, we'll be using the third person template for this. Now this is a new project using version 4.19.2. Um, only with the start content enabled. And let's just go ahead and play this and see what we actually have in, in the way of in here at the minute. So we can, how about a pickup that makes us jump higher? That's something that we can surely modify. So for this pickup system, uh, we're going to, well, let's go ahead and make the pickup first of all, shall we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a right click in here, make a new blue blueprint class of type actor. And we're going to name this uh, jump pickup. Okay. Now in here, let's go ahead and fire this up. Apologies for my slow computer. Um, and let's add a couple of components to this. So let's add a static mesh. So we can see this thing in the world. Um, let's raise it up a bit. And so this isn't necessarily necessary. This, wow, that was a mouthful. This isn't necessary, but it allows us to just check what's going on. So I'm going to put in a, a little cylinder thing here. That'll do. So that's my pickup. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to turn off its collision just so I can properly run over it. Um, so no collision on that. Now we will need, there is a component that is necessary. We're going to need something to detect an overlap. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a sphere collision. And we'll just uh, increase the radius over here on the right hand side. Make that a bit bigger. So when we walk within that radius now, we're going to collect that pickup. Okay, so in the event graph then, we can remove these, we don't need to do anything on begin play or on tick, but on event actor begin overlap, what we want to do is drag off here and cast it to our character. So in this case, it's the third person character. And this is where we're going to figure out what we do. So I'll leave that there for now. That's that pretty much set up. Um, so I'm going to jump into the third person character. Let me see if I can find him. Third person blueprint blueprints third person character here we are so in here we have all of this various jump stuff and um, what we're going to do is go ahead and make an event for what we want to happen so i'll right click i'll make a custom event i'll name this uh, jump pickup and so this is where we're going to modify what it does uh, so what i'm going to actually do is have the character will have all of the various uh, pickups that they can have all of the actions from that will be kept within the character class because it affects the character So my character movement, I'm going to want to get a reference to this if we're going to play with the jump speed or the jump height rather So let us see what we have for jumping um, We have a max jump height there Let's see. I've not really tried to do this before um, We could get the max jump height max step height Blah, 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 blah. How interesting. It doesn't seem to allow us to jump. Ah, now that's going to fire up Visual Studio. Okay. So I'm kind of winging this one here. I've not actually done this, uh, set this up before, but I have a pretty good idea on how we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, the character movement then. Okay, let's make a pickup that makes you run really fast for 30 seconds instead, okay? So we can set our walk speed. Set the max walk speed to whatever the walk speed is and we'll times it by two. So I will get the walk speed and I will multiply it by two. So uh, float by float, by float, we'll put that by two and plug that into our max walk speed. So whatever this happens, we're gonna have this jump pickup that's gonna happen. And we're gonna set the max walk speed to do that. And then what we're gonna do is set a timer uh, timer by hand up by event rather and this is going to say so this here is going to be how long this uh, Pickup lasts for so this value here is going to say okay So I'm going to double my walk speed for uh, 10 seconds and then I'll be done with it So we're going to drag off here and make a custom event and this is going to be change walk speed Back and what that is going to do is I'll get another reference to character movement, paste that in over here, and we'll set the max walk speed to be uh, whatever the walk speed is, divided by two. 
So we're going to double it, then we're going to half it. Uh, so float divided by float divided by two. Lovely. There we are. So let's explain what's going on here. So we have the custom event that's fired, and then we're going to set the max walk speed to whatever it is, times two. And then we're going to set this timer going. So after 10 seconds, it will call this event, change walk speed back, and it's going to half the walk speed and set the walk speed to that. So now we need to figure out what our jump pickup is going to do. So as our third person character, we should now be able to type in jump pickup. And there we have it. So the when we touch it, we cast the third person character and we call the jump pickup. And since we want to get rid of that pickup, we're going to destroy the actor this. So we're going to get rid of this. That's the pickup. So this is inside the pickup and this is inside our third person character here. So let's go ahead and drop a pickup into the world and see whether it works. So I run at this sort of speed and I touch it. And suddenly I can run a hell of a lot faster for a good 10 seconds or so. And then it should come to an end. Any time now. There we are. We're back down to our normal walking speed there. So that's how you make a pickup. That's pretty a pretty simple tutorial. We've covered that in six minutes. Um, I'm going to briefly show you the benefits to doing it this way. So on our jump pickup, what we might do is we might have um, a switch on... Can we switch on an int? We can switch on an int. Uh, and the selection will be a variable of type, so pickup type. So let's say, for example, that pickup one is making you run faster. Uh, this is incorrectly named now since we're not actually affecting the jump. So we'll just rename that to double move speed. Apologies for that. Let me just. Uh, Mute my phone there before that goes off again. Um, okay, so we have a double move speed, and I'm going to do another custom event, which is called half move speed. And on half move speed, um, I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this, like so. And what I'll just do is swap around these two guys here. So you're going to go into there, and the multiplication this time will come from here. And we're going to rename this custom event to uh, change walk speed back to slow. Okay, what's the warning? Can we compile that? Is that happy now? It is. So this will divide the walk speed and then it'll set it back up again. So this is just another custom event. And you could go on to make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these custom events. Okay. But in our jump pickup, by doing a selection on an integer... And having uh, a zero and a one which the one will now be half move speed what we allow ourselves to do is is place multiple pickups in the world that um, do different things depending on what we've already set on them so by making this a public variable here compiling that and plugging that into here compile again what we can do is when we place one of these pickups in the world by selecting it over here on the pickup type you can see that we have a zero and we could change that to a one so if I pick up the exact same pickup, my walk speed is now halved. So we have only one blueprint that is capable of doing various different things depending on what the level designer wants them to do. So if you think of this from a level designer's perspective, a level designer could say, yeah, we'll have a pickup spawn here and we'll have a pickup spawn here. And it's all just one blueprint. And then they'll go through and say to themselves, okay, well, this one should be a running faster one. So that's a zero. This should be a running faster one. So that's a zero. This should be a slow one. So that's a one. And just by changing that variable there, we can change what the entire behavior of the object is. So we'll run fast and we'll run back to normal speed and we'll run fast because it's doubled again and we'll run back to our normal speed. And interestingly enough, I wonder what happens now. I wonder whether our character will go really, really slow or yeah, he's slowed down and there's no pickups for me to speed back up. So you might want to be, you could um, expand on the pickup system even further to say that if one's already, if you're already affected by something. So you could have a boolean value in here saying if affected let's quickly set that up so um uh, affected already so we'll have affected and we'll set affected to be true whenever we enter one of these events and we'll go ahead and set affected to be false after the event has finished and we'll need to do that on both of these 
So if you only wanted the most basic pickup system, you could have paused the video at six minutes and that would have been your job. But this, we like to go a little bit further here, push it out, push the bot out a little bit more and show how systems can develop a little bit further. So this is to say whether they're affected or not. So now what we can do is we can actually uh, check before we do this, we can say affected. We can get the affected value of the character and we can put that into a branch. And now only if it is not true, do we want to proceed? And that actually stops you reaching the destroy actor. So let's let me go and demonstrate what happens here. Is if I pick up this pickup now, I'm affected by it, and I should not be able to interact with this one because I'm already under the influence of another pickup. But when this one runs out, let's wait for that. There it is. We should be able to pick up the next one. And that works just fine. So that's where I'm going to leave the video today, guys. Um, if you like this pickup video, please do let me know. We, we I, I could always expand upon this to do a couple more. I'm planning on putting out about three videos a week now. Um, so if you'd like me to expand on the pickup system and show you where we could take that, then please, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. If you've not already joined the Discord server, please uh, please jump on there. That's a, It's a really great place to get in touch with me and with uh, a lot of other YouTubers who are also developing their own games in Unreal Engine 2. Um, and also, we have a Patreon account now, so it's that that's patreon.com forward slash totally unreal. If you want to have your name in the credits of a video, or if you want access to the files uh, that were in this tutorial, or any other tutorials, they will all be uh, Patreon supporter only things. So you can go ahead and download my entire AI uh, thing, project, and you can take that AI and you can put it in your own game, you can do whatever you want. So instead of having to follow the tutorials, you can skip straight to the end and just grab the bits you want and make a game from all that if you really wanted to. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to check that out. Thank you guys. As always, it's been a pleasure and I'll see you on the next video.